Friday. It's been really amazing weekend for us because we, we worked on a uh, different project as, and uh, my team and uh, uh, you, you can see all of us here. Uh, we worked on uh, an interesting project which is a district finder of Frankfurt. Uh, we first um, we came up with the idea because we thought there were a lot of people uh, outside Frankfurt in different cities and uh, even countries. And uh, inside Frankfurt, we want to move from, from one neighborhood, for example, into another one, or from another city into Frankfurt. But they want to take uh, uh, not just an uneducated guess, but, but to take a, uh, an informed, well informed decision uh, where to move and uh, how to choose the best neighborhood uh, which yeah, so, uh, suits best for them. Not just asking friends and family, but uh, just to have some sort of a powerful tool um, to yeah to analyze the data and to see this one, for example, this district or this neighborhood suits me best. For example, if it is a family which would like to live somewhere in a quiet area uh, with a, a lot of schools and uh, parks and uh, river, they would uh, look for yeah for schools, for natural parks, resorts. I, I don't know, and uh, they will be suggested uh, that the certain areas, certain neighborhood see them best to move in. Or they can really play around uh, with this tool and to see and to have an idea about the city. But then we actually realized that this can be a very powerful tool, not only for citizens of Frankfurt and uh, other, other people, but also for public services to analyze the data. And uh, we thought that it would be a great idea to, to take the open data resources that we have that were uh, proposed or provided by uh, the city of Frankfurt and to uh, merge them with the powerful technologies, uh, modern technologies, and to represent the data. So we had two approaches in our team. Uh, the first one is uh, rather that uh, for for usual people, who us users who would like to see, for example, like a heat map um, to look for the most no noisiest parts of Frankfurt or the, the parts with, where the most schools are or where the youngest people live. Uh, and the second approach, uh, which uses a very powerful technology nowadays, but actually less resources uh, than the first one, to analyze, to visualize the, the data and to have the more detailed analysis of the, the whole data. And uh, uh, my team will represent to you these two approaches now. Okay, thank you, Christina. Um, yes, actually we've been in a group of eight developers and with a lot of uh, experience and a lot of different skills and a lot of different ideas, so we came up with um, a lot of solutions and uh, I'd like to present uh, some of them. Um, one idea was to build up um, some questions so that the user is guided and can just answer some questions and we could use the data given from the open data or from other sources to match which part, which district of the city would be best to live in for this person. Um, but in, in the early beginning we stopped um, further work on that um, kind of, of prototype and um, concerns that it would be much better to, to use the map and visualize data because we uh, figured out that it's somehow difficult to build up questions which do not lead in a special direction. Especially for IT nerds like us. <laughs> and so we, we said, okay, we can just visualize the data and the user can um, build his, his um, opinion by, by its own, by him or by himself. So um, what we've got here is um, 
the visualization um, where we've got different layers which can be turned off and turned on again. Um, and um, especially um, interesting is the part with, with the data. This is not looking very well, but uh, we put this sheet given from open data about the um, Unemployed, of the unemployed, and um, that that was one source. And we took some data from, uh, I think it was Immobilien Scout or something, with the average rent price, and presented the old data in the heat map. Um, so um, there's no information about the absolute height of the numeric values, but um, of the um, um, distribution about uh, across the city. So um, if we change here, let's say, let's look about the 55 to 65 aged um, unemployed from the year 2011, then the, um, the heat map changes and we can step through. Always just look here, so. Um, here is another uh, data set from um, 2011, again from the same age group, but um, yes, one has to well, one has to to play around to to get um, to, to put the data um, to select which data is is best to um, to show. Actually, this um, Excel sheet given from from the city. Um, have got 102 different um, data sets, or data um, sidelines. Side oh, it's not time series, actually. Rows. Rows about all um, districts of the city. So um, it's quite a lot, a huge amount of data, and um, I think there's still some work to do to um, select which is the most um, <coughs> meaningful or most the, the data with the most um, information, the most interesting information. Um, actually, this is still um, a mock-up, uh, or still not the final version, as one could see. It's not uh, designed very well. Um, therefore, we also thought about um, how a final version could look like. Um, and, well, okay, it's the card. Okay, we went. Oh. We lost Frankfurt, but anyhow. It's yeah, so. Okay, anyhow. Okay, so the idea is that we uh, present also different layers here. Let's say heat maps or. Um, a graph with uh, the, the positions of all schools or the position of all doctors. And um, in the beginning, when the, when the user comes to the site, all these different layers um, are randomly chosen to, to give the um, user an idea which information he could get here. And after and to each visualization, there's a short description um, what data is presented. And when he's got enough information on how to deal, how to handle with it, then he can push the call to action button. And um, afterwards, the slideshow stops. And then he's got up there in the search um, area the possibility to look for the things he's interested in and to turn on the different layers of information he could add to this map. So this would be what well, the final version should look like that. Yes. And now I'm, I'm fine with my part, so um, I'd like to head over to my colleague. Um, yeah, thank you, Martin. And now I'm presenting the third part of our project. Um, this is the reason is that I was sitting here on Friday and was listening to all the initial ideas of the project members, and 
I must honestly say, at some point, I really lost the track on this, yeah, because I'm not a web developer per se, but uh, just uh, um, in the IT field with in other domains. And then I thought, okay, I could just hang around for two days and maybe not, not really contribute, or I could try to bring in um, my skills. And um, this led to the decision to build up a. Oh, Let me just fix this. Okay, yeah, that would be good. Yes, you can get the phone. Maybe um, this legend can be the thing. Okay, so I decided to build a so-called Tableau dashboard, and this is a front end technology which is um, which has license costs and so on. But there is a free version which I use to build the dashboard, <coughs> and the data basis for this is again open data from Frankfurt. And what we can see here, we can just uh, have a look on what kind of data, uh, what kind of insights we might be able to generate. The first, so this is the main control on the right um, top, and we, are, we have chosen Anzahl Einwohner Gesamt. Um, yeah, so pretty clear. And we, we can see that these suburbs in red are the biggest ones in terms of number of, uh, of uh, residents. And in the north, they are rather, yeah, rather shallow. Um, yeah. <laughs> if we um, change the parameter here, here you can see what data we have included already. Um, for example, the number of people under 18, the younger people, which is interesting, are rather in the suburbs where not so many people in total live. Yeah? That means these suburbs contain a lot of young people, which is quite interesting to know, in my opinion. We can also see the tendency, which means some of the change. OK, didn't change that much. I don't know if that's the data or that's the bug. Um, <laughs> let's, let's switch to the working people from 18 to 64. And we can see they are concentrated rather in the center of the city, more or less obviously, maybe. Yeah? And here we can see the tendency is somewhat similar. Um, all the red districts show that these are the districts where those kind of people in this age go into, yeah? or at least they um, even get bigger in, in the percentage. And um, the elderly people, um, who have thought, um, yeah, all the red districts have a lot of them um, for it, for, it, uh, for, um, for uh, interest. Riedberg here has not so many. <laughs> it's interesting because I mean, Riedberg is a quite new, or they have been building a lot of houses there. Yeah, a lot of young people moved in there, so the percentage of older people is not so high. And if we look at the tendency, it is somewhat similar. Yeah, so we can see which kind of <coughs> The districts are getting even older, if you want to say, yeah. and which uh, districts are not getting so much older. And this is then also in line with the average age of the whole district, showing you that who would have thought, I, would, I didn't know, um, Sachsenhausen is really one of the, on average, oldest uh, districts in terms of the age. <laughs> Without any judging, <laughs> <laughs> just uh, good to know. Him. Okay, and then we have some other. Um, uh, maybe this is also interesting. Yeah, the foreign people, and these are the people with a not German passport. They tend to align to the mine. I don't know why. Yeah? <laughs> and and, uh, and to the suburbs, they try to avoid. For which reason ever? I don't know. And also, we can see the tendency, the change. And, oh, by the way, the data is from 2014. Um, and the change means uh, what has changed from 13 to 14, something like that. Yeah? And we can see the tendency is similar. Yeah? They all try to go across uh, near to the uh, river. 
Maybe they would like to swim or what? I don't know. <laughs> um, um, then we can also see uh, what kind of districts um, have grown in, in what kind of percentage. And again, we would have thought that uh, Wittberg, one of the most growing districts, also the Gallusviertel here, which has been uh, a lot in the media, right? But interestingly, also the Bahnhofsviertel. And for what reason? I don't, yeah, Riederwald seems to have shrunk. Yeah. Um, and this is um, from a five year perspective. Um, another interesting point is maybe the number of single households, which accumulate rather in the center and also in Sachsenhausen, which is maybe in line with the observation that there are a lot of older people. And the older you get, the higher the probability that you are alone at some point, as sad as it is. <laughs> I don't want to laugh about it. But. And also interesting, maybe family with kids. They try to indeed avoid the regions where uh, what what did I show? Where the single households are? I mean, yeah, of course, it also fits. Yeah, if you are not single, maybe you have kids. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, again, Wittberg, you see, there are a lot of families with kids going to Wittberg. It seems like yeah, it looks like. And this is only the data which is uh, um, telling you this. Um, yeah. Okay, maybe this is also interesting. The average rent. Of course, in the center it's expensive to live, and in the suburb it's not so expensive. This might also maybe explain some trends, yeah? according to how much it is uh, to live there. And um, yeah, Erste Dichter is also interesting. Basically, if you're not in the inner city, you don't find so many physicians. You would have thought. I don't know. I did not. I did not know this. But remembering, if you go through the city, if you look here and there, everywhere, all the physicians, but in the suburbs, not so many. That makes sense as well. Right? OK, um, what do we have? Wahlbeteiligung, uh, also quite interesting in my opinion. Luckily, most districts are indeed quite active, if you judge 50% of being active. But for example, Bahnhofsviertel, not so many go to the Wahl. Today it was the wine, right? <laughs> 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 I must honestly say I wanted to go, but then I thought <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 okay, um, Yeah, oh now it's and which also very <laughs> And which district do you do? I do not live in Frankfurt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, you got it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah Arbeitslos. <laughs> um, a lot of people know, for example, Höchst is a rather problematic district, at least to my knowledge. And this is also directly shown in the data, which I find quite interesting as well. And here you see in Riedberg, Everybody who is going to Riedberg seems to have a job, which makes sense. Yeah? If you want to go to Riedberg, you have to buy and you have to have money to go there. Okay, and uh, last but not least, um, we may also look at the Wohnfläche per Wohnung. And here we can see the big houses and big flats are rather in the north. And the, the more you go to the center, they are not so big anymore. Of course, this is just the average, no, no uh, um, what do you say, um, no, fatal, also no density, yeah, it's just the average, but still. Um, and yeah, okay, Neubau quotient, of course, again, Riedberg and Gallus have been the most active districts with new houses, also again in line with the news. Yeah. I think that's it uh, for the presentation. Do you have any questions? <laughs>